We are going to take a stroll down memory lane as we get ready to hear the results from Arizona and Utah and all the hubbub about whether or not Donald Trump or Ted Cruz can beat Hillary, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little retro for you all the way back to 1980. And I think you're going to like it. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. Welcome to the program, friend. We've got a lot for you today, but I started, I want to start the program kind of picking up where I left off yesterday. If you missed yesterday's program, it was a barn burner, and we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of a lot of attention from that because I decided to take on Black Lives Matter and other fools, racist fools, race baiting fools, the Republican establishment. It was a great show. You can find it online if you want. Go to our website. Now, I, I, I ended the program yesterday with a song I wrote, I think it, almost four years ago. And it's a spoof song. I did it in one take, a little pitchy, uh, but I want you to watch it. Now get your DVR ready. You're going to want to record this. You're going to want to share this with your friends. And if you don't have the ability to tape it, you can just go to your computer and put in the search engine, Randall Terry Red Dress, boom, it's gonna come up, okay? Then you can forward it to your friends. This is a, a fairly quickly thought out, contemptuous song for the Republican establishment. So I invite you to enjoy the little red dress. You told me that you loved me like no other Said you would take me home to meet your mother You sang me love songs I turned my back and you were gone I thought, what did I do? Sat there waiting for you. Thought we could fix whatever went wrong. GOP, what did you do to me? GOP, was blind, but now I see. GOP, you were using me all along. You said you needed me so we could get to power. I gave you my time and money and you brought me flowers. I finally gave you my vote. Baby, that was all she wrote. You won't return my calls, won't do nothing at all. I was part of your wild oats. GOP, now I know what it means. GOP, was blind, but now I see. GOP, you were using me all along. Then I started wondering. What does GOP mean? Gathering of peacocks, galloping old pompous windbags. Growth on a porcupine, girdle on a pantomime. Good old power hungry granddaddies on Prozac. Godless old pusillanimous sax. <laughs> GOP, that's what you mean to me. And baby, I'ma pay you back. Hello? Yeah, it's me. Who's this? Oh, oh hi. How have you been? I'm good, thanks. Y you need my help? Um... Sure, yeah, no, I'm not busy. No, uh-huh. 
That old red dress you got me? Yeah, I still have it. Well, sh sure, I'll wear it. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, yeah. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, I, I've missed you too. Bye, I, I'll be right over. Well, I hope you got as big a chuckle out of that as I hoped you would. Um, I'm, I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to go down memory lane. Because, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you a story that's got legs and it's really getting around. And frankly, it could be true. It shows how Donald Trump simply cannot beat Hillary. He simply cannot beat her in the fall election. Does not matter what happens. He cannot beat her. Just stay with me through the break and I'll, and I'll read you the story. Don't go away. If you own a business and would like to advertise on our program, please contact us. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations from coast to coast. We air at 8 p.m. Eastern and then all times are local. We have a lot of reach, friend, and this is an opportunity at a great price for you to get your product or your service in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Also, if there's something that's important to you and you'd like to have a month where you just say thank you to this ministry or promote a certain ministry or a certain cause, contact us. Our rates are incredibly affordable. You'd be surprised. And you, again, can reach into hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of homes. We're currently seen in possibly in over 30 million homes. So give us a call, give us an email, and we'll put a commercial up for you. Can Donald Trump beat Hillary in a general election in November of this year? There's a lot of professionals that say it's simply not possible. The media hasn't begun to go after Trump, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to read to you, actually, uh, one of these stories. Very interesting. The nation's Republicans are working against the clock to answer two key questions. Can populist Donald Trump possibly attract enough independent and Democratic voters in, to win in November? And if he is likely to lose, does Ted Cruz or John Kasich have enough time to challenge him for the GOP nomination? The consensus among polit political experts is that time has probably already run out for both of them, though they still appear the stronger choice to beat Hillary Clinton in November. But some experts caution don't count Donald Trump out as a national candidate for the fall. He is not, they say, a McGovern or a Goldwater or for that matter, a, a Mitt Romney or a John McCain. The fringe candidates who led their parties to one-sided defeats in 1972 and in 1964. Intellectuals don't want to take him seriously, but he does well with working class voters. He would take the West challenge Hillary in the South and do well in the pivotal Midwest states like Ohio and Illinois, whose Southern regions tilted toward Obama in 2012, they say. So this is a fairly well thought out piece uh, showing the danger that Donald Trump poses uh, for the Republican Party. And I'm making every last bit of this up. This is actually a news story from 1980. It's from March of 1980. And I just took out the name Don, uh, Ronald Reagan and put in Donald Trump. Oh, are you comparing Reagan to Trump? No, 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 no. I'm just showing the idiocy involved in so-called political experts. Idiocy. So let's read the real story. <laughs> Here's the one that ran in March of 1980. Okay, we're going back 36 years. The nation's Republicans are working against the clock to answer two key questions. Can conservative Ronald Reagan possibly attract enough independent and democratic votes to win in November? And if he is likely to lose, has former President Gerald Ford enough time to challenge him for the GOP nomination? The consensus among political experts is that time has probably already run out for Gerald Ford, though he still appears the stronger choice to beat Jimmy Carter in November. But some experts caution, 
don't count Ronald Reagan out as a national candidate for the fall. He is not, they say, a McGovern or a Goldwater. Fringe candidates who led their parties to one-sided defeats in 1972 and 1964. Intellectuals don't want to take him seriously. Mm. But he does well with working class voters. He would take the West, challenge President Carter in the South, and do well in the pivotal Midwest states like Ohio and Illinois, whose Southern regions tilted toward Carter in 1976, they say. Do, do you see how stupid this looks in retrospect? How absolutely juvenile, stupid. I, I wanna say the word stupid with as much contempt as I can pull up in my voice. You, you follow me? I'm not, I'm not trying to be unkind, but it's stupid. It's not just stupid in retrospect. It was stupid at the time. And what they're saying about Donald Trump right now against Hillary in the fall is stupid. It's dumb. It's not intelligent, okay? Donald Trump is bringing Democrats in. He's bringing independents in. He's created the, G the dream come true statistical look at who is voting for him. The problem is it's him. They hate him. The Republican establishment hates him because he's not their man. They can't buy him. They can't bully him. They can't predict him. And they might not invite him to the parties. So let me point out one thing here that I thought was really interesting. These idiots, and I say that with all the charity that I can muster in my heart. These idiots in 1980, March of 1980, who wrote this piece and who analyzed it, they said they would rather have Gerald Ford up against Carter than Ronald Reagan. That went really well in 1976. D do you see the insanity here? Now, if we're going to beat Jimmy Carter, we need to go with a loser. We need to go with the guy who he beat, who Carter beat in 1976, because now he's got a much better chance of winning. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I used a Southern accent. And the Southern people, please forgive me. They have far more wisdom and more intelligence than the New York City, Washington, D.C. corridor, corridor pro, the political foolish prognosticators. So let's insert uh, a, a New York accent to insult the political establishment. Oh, wait, no, I've got a New York accent. I've got the upstate New York accent. So the New York, Washington, D.C. political cartel the moneyed class, the powered class. They are not smart people. No, that's not true. They're smart in, the, in that they have wormed their way and weaseled their way with a lot of hard work and a lot of bribery and a lot of hind end kissing. They've gotten, can I say that on the air? They, they've, they've gotten to a place where they control a lot, okay? Kind of like the foolish people who put the emperor in his new clothes. They orchestrated things to the point where they could get the emperor to walk out naked and tell him that he had clothing on, all right? So there, there's a level of genius in them and a level of, of, of clinical insanity. And now things are out of their control. They've, it's spun out of their control. They can't control, they can't bring it back and they still haven't even figured that out. And so they're mimicking their, the storyline of 1980 and they don't even see the absurdity of it. That's how blinded they are by their own pride, by their own wealth, by their own love of power. And I say if Donald Trump gets the nomination, he will trounce Hillary. And I'm, the only thing that I'm uh, almost as happy about of him trouncing Hillary is for him to relegate some of these fools and these arrogant, pompous, manipulative enemies of righteousness and justice. And I'm talking about the Republican establishment. I'm, I'm thrilled at the possibility of him pushing them into the political wilderness and giving them the retirement that they so richly deserve. Friend, this program is supported by friends like you who believe in what we are doing. We run a very tight ship. 
Thankfully, we are on over 130 stations across the country having tremendous impact. We get emails every day. We get letters in the mail. Not every day, but almost every day. We hear from people who love what we're doing. What people don't understand is that it's sort of expensive to produce a television show like this. It doesn't require earth-shattering funds, funds, but it, it does require financial help. So I am asking you, if you enjoy this program, throw us a 10 or a $20 bill every once in a while, or even a 50 or a $100 check. You see the address there on the screen. Your gifts are not tax deductible, by the way, because we wanna be able to say what we want to say regarding politics without the IRS telling us no. So if you like the program, I ask for your support. I'm getting a little worked up. I'm letting off a lot of steam. It's getting hot in here. Can you crank the AC on, please? All right. Why would the Republicans want Hillary? I want to take a look at this. I was speaking last night to some friends and family out of state. We did a call and um, they were like, I don't understand why the Republicans are saying they don't want Trump. Why some of them are actually saying that they would rather have Hillary. I'm going to tell you, it's really simple. A known devil is better than an unknown devil. It's that simple. And, and there's a little bit more to it than that. But it, they know Hillary. They know what they're going to have to do, what compromises they'll have to make, what they're going to get out of it. So let's take a look, let's analyze for just a minute why you, if you're part of the Republican base, the plebeians, those, those that, that riffraff, that rabble at the gate who have somehow congealed together to bring Trump to where he's at and Cruz right behind him, you, th those of us who the Republican Party establishment just despises, they loathe us, okay? Let's ask ourselves why? Why would they rather have Hillary than Trump? Well, many of them, okay, we're talking about the Chamber of Commerce Republicans, the wealthy Republicans. What do they want? They want amnesty. They want it, friends. Make no mistake about it. John McCain was doing the bidding of the moneyed Republican class. Now, why would they want amnesty for 13 million illegal immigrants? Why in the world would... Republican establishment, small and medium business owners want amnesty for the Mexicans. You ready? Money. It's cheap labor. And they don't, it, it, costs too, it costs too much money for these businessmen to vet all of the people that are applying for jobs. They don't want the hassle of, are you a legal immigrant, an illegal immigrant? There's a federal agent who's gonna show up and do a spot check. And, 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 and. We need to just run our business the way it should. We need you to have a social security number. We need to know that you're a taxpayer. We need to know that you're here legally. It would really be a heck of a lot easier if you were just an American citizen. Oh, please, somebody change these laws so we can go on with our business and make money on the backs of this cheap Mexican labor. And we want it to be legal. The end, all right? These are the kissing cousins of the people that sent jobs to Mexico and to Brazil and to the Pacific Rim, to China, to South Korea. This is the elite. This is the people that were interested in a bottom line. They didn't care about American jobs. When they sent these jobs to Mexico and then to China, they knew that American plants were gonna close and they would throw American workers out of work. They didn't care. They cared about the money, the bottom line. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is, it's, it's reality. They knew what they were doing when they did it. So they want to have Hillary win so that they can get amnesty, so they can get more money. The end, they don't, they don't want a wall, do you understand? Well, we don't know what Trump is gonna do. We want Trump to give us some of his policy initiatives. I'll tell you one, W-A-L-L, -L, wall. Now, why, think this through with me. The Republican leadership, I've often said on this program that they're fools and that they're foolish. 
I've got a, I've got a couple more minutes. Right? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more minute here. I want to make a point, and then I'll do the last segment. What do you think is going to happen if those 13 million illegal immigrants from the southern border, if they get granted blanket amnesty or something that's really speedy? What do you think is going to happen politically? What party do you think they will register in? You think they're going to register as Republicans? <laughs> do you think that, really? I don't think so. They're going to register as Democrats. And then the Republican Party will never control the White House again. In my lifetime, in your lifetime, if those 13 million people become, if the, if the majority of them become Democrat voters, then the Republicans will never be able to take the White House in, in, the, in the foreseeable future. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So this is, this is almost a suicide mission for some of these people. Now, Reno, how could you say that? Well, because once they register as Democrats, they could become a swing vote in de Texas. They could turn Texas into a Democrat state. Florida, N New York, New Jersey, the Northeast, Illinois forever, Ohio, a swing state. No, if a whole bunch of Mexican workers go to Ohio, that state is going to become a Democrat state. Virginia that goes back and forth. There are tons of Mexicans living illegally in Northern Virginia and in different places in Virginia. Virginia will no longer be a swing state. It's going to become a Democrat state. There are other states in the South that beco could become a Democrat state just by virtue of the Democrat vote from illegal immigrants who have granted amnesty and citizenship and the right to vote. So those of you who actually care about the GOP, the Republican Party, which I care about this much anymore, okay, just a bitty bit. You better reach gently over and take the gun away from the GOP's head. They got a gun to their own head. We're not gonna take Trump, we want Hillary. Go ahead, blow your own brains out, you moron. Blow your political brains out because if you get Hillary, you're gonna get amnesty and when you get amnesty, you're gonna lose the White House forever and then you'll be licking the boots of Hillary and every one of her successors until the day that you get put in your box with the grit all over your tongue from the boots that you licked from your Democrat presidents. <laughs>
because they can't control him. He's not their guy. So if you want to see why, uh, why Trump is such a threat to them, just look at the vote in Washington, D.C. Look who voted for Kasich and for Rubio. It's the Republican insiders. They don't care what we want, people. They care about themselves and their money. And you are just a tool to get to their ends.